Hello everybody. Welcome back to my Empyrean workshop and work on the broadsword. Codename broadsword, I should say. It's been progressing. As you can see, the hangers are now fully blocked in. And I've used combat steel at both ends to give it some good protection both from bow on and stern on fire and i've used hardened steel for the rest of the outer skin of the hangers now if we just go down into one you can see there's quite a bit of regular steel dotted around the most of the floor is regular steel although the blocks on the outside underneath are hardened steel and the sum at the ends there on the inside of the ship although that's combat steel at that end I'm guessing I'm going to have to upgrade at least one layer one extra layer of this to combat steel but maybe not how far does this no that's two layers so we'll keep it with the two layers there um there's a little bit there that needs an upgrade though don't know how that escaped. Yeah. yeah, so let's just bring the hood back up. Get the multi-tool. Just upgrade that to combat steel to match the rest That's of it. Done. Right, okay. What have I been doing? And I have been very, very busy. What's going on there? Why did we go into that far? Oh, that's right. It's mirrored. That's why. Um, I've been very, very busy. So let's start with the least spectacular of it. I think I showed you this last week. I showed you the putting in this little combat defense post here. I've done a little bit of texturing in and around this engine bay just to try and get a style guide going. You can see we've got this um, dimpled floor for walking on. We've got some texture lighting under there. Done the, the walls. Now, the one thing that's got me really worried is that's the hangar door. That's the end of the hangar door. The inner hangar door, but it is the end of the hangar door, and it's touching the engine, which means that the other hangar door, if I go into that block so we can see it go up a bit be easier to see there's the inner hangar door. There's the outer hangar door. Both of them are touching the engine. There is a risk that if this gets blown out by incoming fire to the bow, the um, explosion propagation system will transfer some of the explosive force from this, treating this as one block into the engine and blow the engine out so that's a risk we're going to have to be aware of and it means that for sure we're going to need engines out here because at least they've got a block separation from the door this engine is in direct contact with the door actually that Probably means these are in direct con yes, these are in direct contact with the door look. Oh dear. So I may have to find an additional system of putting a door out here to further protect these doors. At least on the bow, which is going you know, normally the bow on any ship takes the majority of fire unless the enemy can get behind you. We'll have a think about that over the next episode. Anyway, I got the got some texturing texturing experiments done here, um, just to get things going. Now, if I turn my light off, it all looks very dark there. But if I turn the ship on, you can see I've also put in some mood lighting. So not only have we got the texture lighting around the engine, which helps to pick it out a little bit, but I've got these little corner lights up here 
spotlighting down onto the engine and it just makes it rather nice now at the other end i've been even busier um i've got to figure out how to get there we'll deal with what i've done in the hangar shortly right okay so each side of the ship we've got this staircase and if i can get the controls to work right it'll be a bit janky because you can't fly diagonally in god mode right so in here this is aft engineering and as you can see mostly it is complete there's little bits of tweaks and bells and whistles to do remembering i've got my lights turned off i'll put it on see the difference so this is the lighting within this room doing its thing and i hope you like that you can see i've got uh, not just texture lighting, but I've got spotlighting, illuminating the engines to show the detail off. Again, the paintwork in here is experimental right now, just to see if I like the overall style of it. I'm kind of liking it, although there's little areas that I'm thinking could do with some improvement. Probably need to put some more textures in just to just to break up some of that plainness and we've got the first generator in place this is not so much a decoy generator as a backup generator it's very heavily um, defended in terms of the armor that they've got to get through to reach it it's um, I mean we've got the, the entire armor belt back here which is about six blocks and then we've got the addition of this armor level if they're coming in from the stern to get it from the outside they've got to get through the outer hull and then get through to here and from above they've got to come th not only through this deck layer which is combat steel but they'll have to come through whatever deck layer is above to get to it so it's going to take a lot of punishment before that generator gets taken out. So this is a backup generator more than anything. Um, designed to keep the engines going, you know, through thick and thin. The core is now in there. And to meet rules on different servers, the core is not fully enclosed and hidden. It is visible it can be accessed and if I get in here you can see the crosshairs is saying core faction so if I go down like that right and in here I have got the shield room is in place and you notice there we've got a, a cargo box for pentaxid and on this side a cargo box for Prometheum you don't have to go in that room to access them you can obviously remote access them remotely you come in you've got a two block elevator to get down onto the floor of the shield room and you've got a walkway around here which is keeping you outside the radiation from the um, from the shield itself if you watch the rad meter in the top right so if we're in here it's saying ambient um, rad in the proximity is 3.8. We're receiving zero. Come forward onto this square. We're still on zero. We can walk round to these and we're receiving zero. If we turn the shield on, go into here, put the shield on. Standing here, we're still receiving zero. Oh, hang on. Does the shield generator not push out radiation? If so, that's a win. Awesome. Now, we've got a little bit of a conundrum there. Because... Whilst we've got the polarized hull shield in there... 
we don't have a pentaxid tank so how is it running <laughs> there's a good question because the pentaxid tank should still be in there where's it gone did i put it in okay right it looks like i have not installed the pentaxid tank yet at all therefore we need to and in order to do so i've had to spawn one in um and i'm just thinking i'd like to have it in this room i can't put it there because of that lcd projector which puts the labels on those boxes um i could put it above the pentaxid store itself make the room a little bit isometric i need to decide quickly because i've got other things to show you um I mean, logically speaking, the shield room is the place to, to put it. Put it in with the shield. Uh, remembering that the pentaxid is going to fuel both the shield and the jump drive. Now, we've got to find a home for the jump drive. And I'm thinking we may make this the jump drive room here. It's nice, nice and protected. We can put walls either side of that staircase. That gives me a five block width. And if I take, if I elevate that beam up by one, I think we can get it in there. Let's just check what's the dimensions on the shield engine. Three, two, five. Yeah, I thought so. So elevating, elevating this beam, we could get the shield on there. We could put the pentaxid tank with it. That would be the way to go. All right. We'll come back to that in a moment we'll and um, we'll get that done right the farms now i've started the farms i do need to use my lights here um and you can see we've got 27 grow plots there and the same on the other side i was wanting to make all three of these bays into farms and that would give us um, a total of uh 81 162 grow plots which is more than enough for a small faction operating off this ship it'll keep med bays and food processors in plentiful supplies however when i come down into the hangar if you remember i've blocked this in you haven't seen this before this is the styling that i wanted on the hangar ceiling and then once i get it all textured up we'll add a lot of detail into it however that's the bottom of the grow plots and i cannot change that texture on them if i get the the paint gun out leave the color the same um but if i try for example to put that texture on the bottom of it it doesn't you cannot change the texture on the bottom of the grow plots so the only way to do that is to cover that with thin sheetings uh, which adds an extra layer of armor and especially as this is just going to be regular steel, not um, hardened steel. So that I may have to do. Now that's going to lead to having to worry about this line of blocks. And what to do with that. I don't want to have to repeat that block on this side although i've had to there because of the cargo array behind there that's the other thing that's gone in down here we've got a 320k cargo um array on each side there we are 320,000. this is like a drop box for each hangar this is the aft section of the hangar it's caused a few issues trying to get the um in fact i've just realized what i can do with that block if we have a block that will do it no we won't that is the only block that will fit in there rats oh well we'll leave it like that it kind of echoes that slope there if i could get two blocks that would give me that line repeated there 
I'd be a very happy man, and I may play around with that off camera to try and get it. I'm also not happy that we do not have a block that allows this step here, because I either have this here, which would perpetuate along there, or we have this cavity here, because we can't slot a block in there, because it's already occupied by a block. It's just one of the limitations of the building system. So this ceiling, I want to get something done on this ceiling. And using thin blocks to cover it and try to repeat that pattern on this side, I think is the only way to go. And I will probably have that in place and done for the next episode. I'll have all of those farms, that's that cavity and this cavity have the farms repeated all the way along there, have the ceiling fake um, shaped like this using thin blocks just to keep some sort of um, visual continuity going. And um, I'll get that. I should have the ceiling complete at least... I would say it will be at least to here complete. I'm going to try and get it complete to here, get the hanger ceiling complete to here, and try and get this wall from that height down to there complete across there for the next episode. That, that's my target on the, the getting the hanger encased completely encased so that um, we can then think about texturing out the hangar. But as you can see, now that we've got these elevators and that cargo block in, you can now appreciate the size of the hangar. I've built surface bases and underground bases that have got smaller hangars than this. This is a much larger hangar. I think I've only built one hangar larger than this. And that was on the last group server where I built it in a, um, a dead end valley on the side of a mountain slope. And I built a huge hangar, maybe this size, maybe a little bigger, um, which was our fleet hangar, which nobody ended up using. It became a, like a parking garage. So that's how far I've got so far. We've got the, um, like I say, we've got the engineering done out. Now, what I will do just to show a little bit of building on camera if I grab a block and we don't need symmetry on this one so take that out we're going to elevate that bar but first I will put in the jump engine so if I swap that out so number six Take that and change that shape to that. We could actually do it with that one. I prefer to do it with that one. No, we can do it with the thin one because I want to use the thin one at both ends. So put that one there. Put that one there. There. And there, like that. And the six blocks that are going to go under... Oh, sorry, the three wide set of blocks that are going to go under the jump drive, I want to increase to hardened, even though it's an internal bulkhead. I'm just... Wanting to protect the drive. And I'm just thinking what's directly under there. Directly under there is the shield room. So, yeah, it pays to have that hardened, for helping to protect the shield as well. Right, so we'll get the, get the jump drive in there. And then at this end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 
the pentaxic tank directly against the the shield itself like that this is why i was wanting to use the the thin shapes so uh that's, that's i'm doing that's actually the right shape put that like that there put that there so that actually that's the correct shape there that's perfect that then that'll then allow me to put a guarded walkway on these three blocks to stop you getting too close to the radiation from that tank so for example i don't know if it's going to show yeah, it's showing we're now picking up 3.8 radiation in this zone. If I get a step closer, does that lift? Yeah, of course it does. Massively up. I think that 3.8 radiation is from space, though. If I pull right back, yes, it is. So the 3.8 is from space. Ignore that. So if we... That block there, if we stand on that block there... We should be getting no extra we're not getting any extra radiation if we step forward one block we will pick up radiation so it's standing there we're getting it and it will be the same on this diagonal block yep and back here it should be none drops away again this one we're getting none are we getting any off the shield itself yeah, the shield itself is giving us big radiation. So we need to put a one block perimeter all the way around it. That's where we come back to here. And what we need to do is to take out that block there, which means I will need to retexture the block on the other side. Um, I wonder if we've got an L-shaped block that goes from a half block to a thin block. I don't believe we have. This is the wrong block to be doing it with. Should be doing it with four. Yeah, we've got that L shape, which is thin to thin. But we don't have an L shape that goes from half block to thin block. So the only way that I can accommodate that is to put a full a full square cube in there and do the same on that block there. Like that. And then we want hardened steel. Oops. We want hardened steel. And we want the thin blocks here. Uh, that one. What am I doing? There we are. So that goes there. And I'll take that along there for the side of the stairs. That's into a radiated block. That will be the door because that comes into a non irradiated block. Actually, probably better to put the door there, get it onto the fully non-radiated walk across there. These blocks underneath, I think I'll probably bring this entire room up to hardened steel. So come over to this side, go back onto that block, down, and take that out, take that out, put that in there, pick up that, and rotate that to there. And that can be, I think, I'm going to make this room entirely hardened steel. I need to take that block out first so that I can upgrade it with the multi-tool. Just do those five across there. 
that one needs to go to a full block like that then I need to finish off encasing that room and hardening it up and then texturing it lighting it and all the rest of it meanwhile this has to go across there and whilst we've got combat steel there i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to put another combat steel block there and then from there i'll bring back the outer skinning of this and what i think i'll do put a ceiling above an open area above the drive i think so we do that and then we convert these ones into half blocks To there yeah which means that one has to come like that two no not number two number three we'll put a full block in there and then that one in there like that so that sets my parameters for the the ceiling within this room you see that gives us a space above the warp drive for engineers to get at because they've already got a space underneath look and it will allow me to do things like um maybe put bracing struts in and what have you, all that sort of thing so you can see there the shape of where that room's going um if i just quickly do that on both sides and I know it's easier with symmetry on but it's, it's easier to see what I'm doing without it for this type of area so this is going to be an extension of engineering um, what I may do is convert that block let's just see what happened with those blocks that I replaced here yeah you see I could replace that with another heavy window so if I change that and I bring down a couple of heavy windows got the correct one that one put that there do the same on this side um, hope I get the right block I didn't and I guess that should have happened. Four full cube in there. Like that. Get the paint gun out again. And that'll be that one with a plain wall. Like that. And that gives us a view into or out of the shield room from main engineering. I may, in fact, put an elevator up one or both sides to get from engineering to there except the problem then is that would block that door there so what I may have to do is extend this across as a walkway and have an elevator in there through to it maybe or take stairs up from here and have the walkway above that light make that into a doorway into the shield room that would make sense that would probably make more sense than trying to put an elevator block there and have people walking past that light um so yeah i'll play with that i'll have that done by the next episode and we'll see how we get on with that tying in all of the parts of engineering together is important from playability as well as uh, design viewpoint in my eyes 
and you can see the shield is there. If I fill up that pentaxid, um, do it this way. Oh, it threw 5,000 in. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so I'll get this room finished. I'll get it all textured up. I'll get the, the farms done. And I'll get the the hangar ceilings done. And I'll get that link between the warp drive room and main engineering, aft engineering. I must not call it main engineering. It's aft engineering because we've got forward engineering up there. Um, I'll get the, the connectors between those done. I'll probably take those heavy windows out and do doorways in. Um, I might not. It would depend. See how it goes because obviously that's going to put you walking past this heavy radiation point here if you come in that way. Yeah, 25 rads all the way down the side of there. And then out here, you're back to ambient. All the way across here, ambient. It's gone to zero because we're under the, that structure. If we step out from under that structure, it goes back to the ambient of space. Um, I wish we had that in glass because I kind of don't don't want to block off the the end view of the shield. I want to have those glowy bits showing, but that's the only armor that I can give it on its ends that makes shape with the sense. Let's let me just try that saying that again. That makes sense with the shape. Not shape with it. No, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm an old fart. <laughs> it's going crazy. Okay, so that's that bit did. Um, oh, there's a little bit that I forgot to show you. So down here on the access to these engines, we've got this little corner room, which I've put an LCD on, which is, has got to be edited and tidied up. That's just a holding display right now. Um, Warning, very high radiation past this point. Wear correct personal protection equipment, clothing. And then you come in. The floor is then marked up to say, you know, this is a has zone. And when we come in here, you can see we're straight up to 15 rads. And the temperature is straight up to 1,080 degrees C. Out here, we've still got that on this side of this chamber. On this side of the chamber, it drops away goes back to ambient so passing that red lcd projection is where you go from the low to the high or the high to the low so that's why i've done it like that with two doors on the chamber creates a little bit of an airlock um and obviously that now i need to think about putting out here a radiation shower for washing off any radiation that you've picked up and I really wanted to get it done here, but the problem is if I do it here, you can see the level that I'm at, which is that sort of a middlish floor ceiling. There's the top of the hangar door right there. So we're actually coming out. If I step out here to try and put the shower here, if we go down so that we're in that next block below and step back, you can see that we're in the outer armor there. So I don't want to weaken this zone at all by putting a shower in there, which means any shower would have to go here, which is still on top of the door and still weakening the area, which is a bit of a pain. So it may be that I have to lose that corner and put this into a square door, which loses this rather nice rounded bit of shaping here. And makes it very square and boring so we'll have to i've got to play with that that's one of the areas areas i still have to play with and figure out exactly how i'm going to do it um so that's how she's doing and i hope you're enjoying the progress that the ship's making if you've got any suggestions drop them in the comments down below and if you have any tips regarding little shapes in awkward corners or places 
let me know them. I very much appreciate that. Hope you hope you like the way that she's progressing. Let me know what you're thinking about the overall shape, both internally and externally. And is it a ship that you would play once it's finished? Let me know. I'm a waffling old fart. And I don't want to keep waffling too long. Otherwise, the video gets too long. So all I'll say is, from me, the Gazbeard, as always, it's never goodbye. It's just bye for now. Thanks for watching.